My new new Stingray, Scuba the Second, has arrived, and this time around we're going to do a lot of the things the same, but I'm also going to learn from my mistakes and do some things different. First things first, let's get him out of this box and into quarantine. Let's go. Scuba the second. Looking good. Let's get him in the corner. So we got Scuba the second in quarantine. He's getting drip acclimated with the water coming from the 150. Got the towel over the tank to reduce as much stress as possible for him. Since losing my last Stingray, I've done a lot more research and I've spoken to a lot more experienced Stingray keepers. And a lot of them have told me that it's really not even necessary to quarantine Stingrays. Why? Stingray diseases mostly only transfer to other Stingrays. They don't really transfer to other fish. So that's why it's not really necessary to quarantine. But I still want to quarantine my new Stingray for a few reasons. One, I want to prove that this method of quarantining absolutely works and the issue before was not the tank size that he's in, it was not that the tank wasn't cycled, it was not that the prime didn't work, it wasn't for any of those reasons. The reason was because I was neglectful and I was not paying attention to the skyrocketing ammonia levels. And the other reason why I want to quarantine is because I still do want to make sure that he is eating well and that he is acclimated to my water parameters before just dumping him into the 150. But I am going to learn from my mistakes this time around. First, what am I going to do the same? He's going to be in the same 20 gallon quarantine tank, uncycled. There's not even going to be a sponge filter in there. Uh, no bacteria at all in the water column or on any of the surfaces. Brand new tank setup. And I'm only going to dose Prime every day to detoxify whatever ammonia he produces. Now before some of you lose your marbles, let me explain why I'm doing things this way. Many of us experienced fish keepers already know that one of the best ways to set up a quarantine tank and have it cycle instantly is to add a seeded filter and or seeded media to the tank. The bacteria on your seeded media will handle any ammonia in most cases. But I'm choosing to show the beginners of the hobby that most likely don't have access to any seeded media at all that there's another way. I want to show beginners that a temporary quarantine tank does not need to be set up and running 24 seven. It does not need to be cycled. It doesn't even need a filter for that matter. By simply dosing prime daily to detoxify the ammonia, vacuuming the waste that your fish produce and water changing frequently during the quarantine time frame, you are essentially the filter and the beneficial bacteria. But I figure instead of just talking about how powerful Seekin Prime is, I have to also be about it. So I'm showing living proof with my very own fish that this option can be done. Is it the best option? No, not by far. But is it an option when you have no others? Absolutely. What am I going to do differently this time? What have I learned? Well, before the issue was the ammonia spiking so fast. So now I'm a lot more aware of just how much ammonia these stingrays produce. I did know they produced a lot, but I guess I had to experience it myself to really understand how much. So I'm going to stay completely on top of the ammonia levels in this tank with certain things. Number one, I'm going to add the Seachem ammonia alert to the tank. That way it can always let me know if there's any free ammonia in the tank. Now remember, the Seachem ammonia alert does not detect total ammonia, it only detects free ammonia which is the toxic kind that can be deadly to our fish. While there will be a lot of detoxified ammonia in the tank, that's what Prime is going to do to the ammonia he produces, 
The ammonia alert is only going to alert me of the free ammonia, if any, in the tank. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you want to learn more about that cecum alert, I just did a video on it. Check it out right there. The other thing I'm going to do differently is be much more on top of my water changes. I plan to do 50% water changes every other day, regardless of the ammonia levels, to make sure that the ammonia never spikes and goes above what the prime can handle. What can prime handle? One dose of Prime handles one parts per million of ammonia and it's safe to dose Prime up to five times, which means it can handle five parts per million of ammonia. What happened last time, my ammonia spiked way beyond that and the Prime could not detoxify all of it and that was part of the problem. Third thing that I'm going to do, one of the experienced Stingray keepers mentioned to me about the heater that was in the tank at the time. It did not have a cover and Stingrays can be susceptible to heater burn if they go over it during a time period where the heater kicks on, right away they could get a burn. So this time around, I got some heater covers. I am not going to even risk him going over that heater and getting burnt. I truly wholeheartedly believe that by implementing these little changes, this quarantine time period is going to go absolutely smooth and I'm not going to have any problems at all. Knock on wood. <laughs> now, the other thing that I'm going to change as well is that I'm not going to do a two-week quarantine this time i'm only going to quarantine for one week so today is tuesday the 22nd i want you guys to check that out can you guys see that so this week i'm going to go through the quarantine process do my water changes keep an eye on the ammonia the whole week long and then i'll see you guys next week when we're going to add them right into the 150 but guess what it's next week with the power of editing and guess who's still doing good your boy scuba the second is still here with us doing great and ready to go into his new home today is wednesday november 30th check it out right here guys top corner november 30th it's been over a week of quarantine i've been dosing prime every single day doing water changes every other day and the free ammonia levels in the tank have never gone beyond safe levels and i even have a second backup ammonia alert just in case to make sure that the free ammonia has never been beyond the safe levels in this tank. Even though the other day I did do an ammonia test using the API master test kit, which tests total ammonia, and there was about two to four parts per million of ammonia in that tank, but because it's detoxified from the daily prime, the free ammonia levels have never risen into a dangerous level. If the free ammonia ever actually was two or four parts per million, Scuba the second would be dead, without a doubt. Now, while I was posting and documenting the entire process daily over on the social medias, if you're not following, make sure you do, I received a ton of support from you guys and I really appreciate all the positive vibes. But I also received some hate from guys that either didn't understand what I was trying to show here or from guys that just weren't aware of Prime's capabilities. Or maybe they just don't like me for whatever reason. They said I was needlessly risking a Stingray for an experiment that was doomed to fail. Not realizing that I already know Prime's capabilities because I've been telling you guys about cycling a tank with fish in on day one using Prime instability since I don't even remember when. In case you still don't know about that, check that video out right there. On day one and two, they said Prime alone was not capable of keeping a heavy ammonia producing fish like a stingray alive in an uncycled tank. On day three and four, the argument changed to why would I teach beginners this method? It's too risky. By day five and six, the argument changed to a one week quarantine? That's pointless. Why even do it? And then after an entire week of success, the argument morphed once again into why are you stressing out a stingray with all those chemicals just to prove a point? First of all, I don't know why this word chemicals is such an evil word in this hobby. 99% of us use chemicals in our tanks every single day. We use water conditioners, we use clarifiers, we use medications, we use minerals in a bottle. The tap water that you use to fill your tanks has chemicals in it. And the 1% of us that's left over use RODI water, which strips the water of everything, but then they have to remineralize it for the fish using, guess what? Chemicals. If you didn't know, minerals like magnesium and calcium are chemical compounds of elements. Let's take this word chemicals off of the evil high horse that doesn't need to be on. Second of all, does this look like a stressed out fish? Stressed out fish don't do the cha-cha slide while eating. Stressed out fish don't even eat at all. Moral of the story being, I could have kept scuba in this tank for a month and the arguments would have just 
kept transforming into something else and something else and something else. Why? Haters gonna hate. They said I was crazy. They called me stupid. They said I was giving out false information to the aquarium community. Some of them even got personal and said, I'm just going to kill my stingray the same way I killed my first stingray. That one hurt. But to all you trolls and haters, non-believers and doubters, I only got one thing to say to you. Told you so. Okay, enough of that. I vented enough. Let's get to what you guys came here to see. Let's get Scuba the second into the main tank. Here we go. Try not to stress him out too much. Move as slow as possible. So I can let him. There you go, buddy. Come on. All right. He's netted. Here we go. Get him here, baby. There he goes. Where am I? He says. Scuba the second in the main tank. With tons more space. Nobody's really caring about him right now because the camera's right here. They think I'm gonna feed them, of course. And we'll give Scuba some time to check. Oh, look at that. Loving that sand already. If you guys don't know, stingrays love to bury themselves in the sand as a form of safety. They like to chill out there as they wait for food to come by and then they snatch it up. Totally normal behavior. You can see he, he's still breathing up above the sand. Let's give him some time to de-stress. Cause that might've been a stressful move. So while Scuba's still getting acclimated to the new tank, he's still right there in the middle, buried under the sand. The discus seem to be the most curious about him right now. Nobody else is kind of messing with him. It's kind of weird. It seems like the Severums are actually protecting him from the discus that are very curious about him. That's kind of cool. From now until the day that this video is posted, I'm going to have a bunch of videos of him right here. And as you can see, he's doing absolutely terrific in the tank. He's doing well. He's already comfortable. So as we watch Scuba having a good old time in the 150 right here, I do want to say one last thing before we end this video. The process that I used of quarantining him in an uncycled tank, in an unfiltered tank, was simply for the purpose of showing those of you that do not have any other options that there is one other option a lot of people in this hobby can only see things out of their own perspective and don't look outside of that there are plenty of people in this hobby like beginners that do not have access to seated media or even people that just don't have the space required to keep a quarantine tank up and running 24 7. so this option that i've proven to work even with a stingray can absolutely work with any other fish is just another option when you're in the situation that you've got to set up a quarantine tank quickly and you don't have any media this is an available option for you by no means am i calling this method the best one or the only one absolutely not this is just additional information for those of you to know that you got this in your back pocket now you guys know that when you add new fish to a tank especially an ammonia heavy stingray it's always a good idea to add some stability to the tank to help boost the beneficial bacteria production because the bio load in the tank has just increased and now we've got to have more bacteria to handle that new bio load. Stability is gonna help with that. But I'm going even one step further than that. For those of you that don't know, this 150 gallon tank has always only had one FX6 on it. Just because of Scuba the second right now, I'm going to double up. I'm adding a second FX6 to this tank, not only to increase the flow and motion of the water in the tank, but it's also going to help in removing more poop, waste, detritus in order to keep the nitrates levels down as far as possible. Also, by adding a second filter full of CK matrix, I can potentially grow more anaerobic bacteria, which will also help in keeping those nitrates nice and low, which is essential when you're keeping a stingray, when you're keeping discus, you need those nitrates low anyway. If you're interested in that, check that video out right there. I'll be installing the FX6. And if you're a beginner in the hobby and you landed on this video, check this beginner's playlist right here. I promise it'll be helpful for you. Either one that you choose, I'll see you on the other side. Peace.